Hey everyone, I am Daniel Arsham. I am here at the Peterson Museum uh, for the opening of my exhibition, uh, Arsham Automotive. This show includes a number of full-scale vehicles, some which are drivable vehicles uh, and others which are purely sculpture. This work is based on the 1961 Ferrari GT, which was uh, used in the film Ferris Bueller's Day Off when they drive it out the back of the garage in that famous scene. Obviously, I was not able to use an actual original uh, Ferrari GT, very expensive vehicle and very few of them uh, existing. So I tracked down the prop master who made the original replicas for the film and created the sculpture based on that. This work is made in quartz crystal and selenite crystal. All of the components of this car have been removed from the original chassis and cast individually. So the doors, the shift knob, all of the steering components, all of the gauges, the tires, um, the emblems, everything on here was removed and, and redone uh, in order to create the sculpture. I've often made sculptures on a smaller scale, which involves a molding process with silicone, but these larger works were impossible to make in that fashion because they would have been too heavy. So the works are actually cast in sections and then reattached back on to the original chassis. So this piece actually, to move it in and out of the gallery, it rolls. No engine in this one. This work is based on probably my favorite uh, Porsche model, which is a 1980 911 SC. Um, the Super Carrera was released um, as kind of like a budget friendly version of the 911. So a little bit of a sleeper vehicle. Um, I always love the font um, and this kind of like late 70s, early 80s design um, that they did with the graphics uh, for the 911 SC. This work is cast in blue calcite and quartz crystal. Similar scenario to the other cars where I had to actually take the entire vehicle apart and cast all of the sections separately and then re-put them back onto the original chassis. This is the first work that I did that actually had a top. So you'll notice the erosion that peaks through the top um, and through the sunroof. Little interesting construction or fabrication note. All of the gauges uh, on the interior of the car if I were to cast them as they originally came, which was flat, none of the detail would have come out, right? I'm only able to capture things that are already in three dimensions. So I ended up recreating all of the gauges um, out of laser cut uh, aluminum and then creating casts of those so that I could capture all of the detail on the speedometer and the tack. Um, the seats were cast individually and re-put back in, uh, into the vehicle. So this work is also moved in the same way. It's rolled. Um, I have the original steering wheel from the vehicle, which comes off. And when it's put into the gallery, it's swapped out for the eroded steering wheel. So this is a quarter scale sculpture of probably one of the most iconic 911 uh, variants, the 930. Um, the original version of this was uh, sculpted in clay and certain parts uh, with intricate detail were 3D printed and then added to the final. Um, the smaller version of this, uh, in contrast to the larger car, is actually cast as a solid unit uh, at my studio in New York City. Um, this version is made of this optical clear quartz and calcite crystal. When I was a teenager, I often had posters from uh, car advertisements on my bedroom wall. I've started to make versions, kind of imaginary versions of these advertisements. So this exact ad never existed. Um, all of the text within it is invented and created. 
um, sort of referencing this potential kind of archaeological future. The technique that's used for these is borrowed from uh, something quite frequently used in uh, antiquity, which is a shallow relief sculpture. So you might often find these on the exterior of um, temples and churches um, where the image is rendered in a very shallow depth and uses a kind of forced perspective um, in order for the image to read correctly. So when you view these from the front, the image looks perfect and, and correct. Um, the vehicle reads, um, but when you come around the side, you can see that it's all been done in this very shallow, uh, this very shallow depth. Another shallow relief sculpture that's based on a Porsche advertisement from the 70s. Um, this one in particular is from the 1973 uh, Carrera RS 2.7, which was one of Porsche's um, very early kind of, I would say, supercar, right? It was a very lightweight uh, car with um, heavy displacement in relation to the weight of the car. Uh, 2.7 liters and all again all of the text in these was kind of created to mimic the sort of style of what the advertisements would have felt like in that period. This one's made in one of my favorite crystals which is an amethyst um, blended in with optical clear quartz crystal. When I'm thinking about the creation of a work I'm often looking both at the physical form that it might take, but also the materiality of it, what the material can tell us or show us about an idea. And so the use of crystal volcanic ash, um, the, the idea of erosion in those works is both a visual thing, but also uh, the use of a material that makes us think about archaeology, about a kind of geological time frame, something that would evolve outside of our own lifespan. I began making works in this uh, bronze technique a couple years ago that uses a uh, patina over the surface of it. And if you left a, a work of bronze like this outside for a hundred years, um, it would naturally get this uh, patina from the oxidation of the bronze. Um, I forced that to happen in this work uh, through a chemical process, um, but I've polished back the crystal. So you have this contrast between the highly polished um, areas of crystal that are sort of growing um, inside of these uh, erosions. One of the qualities that I often um, try to communicate with these works is this notion that the works feel like they're falling apart. Um, they, they feel like they're in a state of decay, but we associate crystallization with growth. So there is this idea that the works could either be falling apart or sort of growing to some kind of completion in the future. This work is obviously based on the famous uh, DMC DeLorean, smaller scale version made in bronze. And one of the things I love most about this material is its ability to be shown in an exterior context. So this could be outside. Um, the patina would change and evolve over time as the elements uh, in the environment um, would begin to oxidize and create different patination. I purchased this original 1955 Speedster about four years ago, and when I got it, it had been restored. Um, it was not a great restoration job, it was black, and I decided to do a project on it. So I stripped away all of the paint um, in an acid wash, all the way down to the bare metal. And just seeing the body shape in that natural form, seeing the remnants, of the filler that the factory would have used um, in Germany at that time, um, I decided to create this project that sort of um, enhanced and really kept this idea of this patinaed age um, within the vehicle, but brought it back up to uh, a fully functional car. The interior of this was done in Japan um, with a technique called boro, which is where pieces of denim um, from clothing that has been worn out or aged has been stitched back together um, to create a new fabric. And there's, so there's kind of a, a beauty 
um, and an attention to, to patina and aging that's present within the fabric. Um, all of the components on this car, uh, which I built with one of the most incredible um, restoration shops here in California, um, run by John Wilhoyt. He has a stock of all of these patinaed parts from different vehicles that he's worked on. So all of the, the tail light covers, uh, the emblems, all of these were sourced from different vehicles that had this kind of patination and age to it. But everything on this car is 100% functional. Um, it's a totally drivable vehicle. One of four, the only one that's drivable in the exhibition. This is a kind of imaginary advertisement for an eroded um, Mustang Fastback uh, that would have been present in the late 60s or you know potentially uh, early 70s. So it uses obviously the horse motif, this kind of referencing uh, sculpture from antiquity, um, even the text, uh, all of the, um, the advertisement kind of lingo, right? Uh, sort of creates this idea that these have like a truth quality about them. This work is made in volcanic ash, the black, and pyrite crystal um, with some sections of selenite uh, mixed into these. And again, with these works, we have this sense that the works are sort of in a state of decay or, or erosion. They, they won't change anymore now, but they give this feeling also that they might be growing. These crystals may be forming um, and perhaps this shape started a long time ago and it's actually building towards some sort of completion. So when I've been looking at selecting vehicles uh, in my work, I'm both looking for something iconic, um, but also trying to tie it into some other cultural narrative. And um, cars that have been used in cinema have been uh, a very significant kind of addition. So I did the uh, the Ferrari from Ferris Bueller, I did the DeLorean from Back to the Future, um, and the 1968 Mustang Fastback that was from uh, uh, the, the movie Bullet with Steve McQueen. Very famous car chase scene, maybe one of the, the most significant uh, early cinema where they're jumping these vehicles through the hills in San Francisco. Um, I had an exact replica uh, built of the car and then cast sections of it, all the door panels, um, all the fenders, um, the steering wheel, the seats, all were cast separate and then reassembled back onto the original chassis uh, of the vehicle. This work is made in volcanic ash and pyrite. Um, there's some quartz in there. Again, this work was created without an engine in it. It does roll, so the only way to move these very heavy sculptures um, is by actually placing them back on the original chassis and, and pushing them into place. This gas pump work was originally created for an exhibition in Detroit, Michigan, um, probably the heart of automotive culture and automotive construction in the United States. I knew that I wanted to do a gas pump and so I went out and bought a vintage pump, but all of the detail in the pricing and um, the information on the outside of the pump, if I were to cast that, uh, it was flat, so it wouldn't come out in the, in the final positive. So I ended up actually fabricating this entire pump um, in wood, plastic, rubber, other materials, and then made a mold of that. So I was able to capture things like gallons on sale, indicators must be at zero when delivery is begun under penalty of law with all the original shell advertisements, the price per gallon, $1.35 in this imaginary moment where this was captured. Um, all of the materiality in this, again, very important for capturing this idea that these works are sort of part of some future archaeology. Uh, this is rose quartz, optical clear quartz, 
and we have this sense that the work is in this state of um, either growth or, or decay. The Pegasus, which obviously used in uh, the mobile gasoline logo, um, significant in automotive sort of culture and history. Um, I made a number of versions of this Pegasus. These were, this was all hand sculpted originally in clay. Um, one of the original versions actually had the mobile uh, text within it, um, but bringing this out and placing it by itself feels like this object that floats sort of between automotive culture and, and art historical uh, context. Two other smaller scale works here, one of them an imaginary cover for road and track with a Porsche 930 um, jumping, uh, perhaps during a race, and all of the content in the magazine is all um, invented, right? It's, it's a fictional uh, magazine. So exclusive track test, McQueen's Mustang GT, zero to 60 in 3.1 seconds. Um, head to head, DeLorean DMC versus the best supercars, 88 miles per hour average speed. When I'm creating these works, I'm trying to capture this idea that they feel like something that could be real, but all of it is a kind of invented fiction. And then of course, a sculptural version of the movie poster for um, Back to the Future with the DeLorean and the date, November 5th, 1955. Um, to create these shallow relief uh, sculptures, I have to kind of rethink the way that the viewer is gonna be looking at them. Um, these works kind of operate in different ways depending on how you look at them. Um, all uh, sculpted in, in clay and, and um, silicone, acrylic, and then a mold is made of the final. This version is made in blue calcite and quartz. Hope you guys enjoyed this little explanation and tour through the exhibition. Um, so happy to be presenting these works here at the Peterson. The work and the exhibition is on view through November, so I hope you get a chance to come by and see it. Thank you.